الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولما ورد ماء مدين وجد عليه أمة من الناس يسقون ووجد من دونهم امرأتين تذودان قال ما خطبكما قال تعالى نسقي حتى يصدر الرعاء وأبونا شيخ كبير وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا لم تستحي فاسنع ما شئت أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اور سسپیکٹ علماء کرام پرزیز ان الز اللہ تعالیٰ ہیز ریویل دا قرآن شریف ایز اے بک آف ہدایت اینڈ ان دس قرآن شریف اللہ تعالیٰ ہیز مینشن مینی مینی انسیڈنس آف دا امبیا علیہ مسلاۃ وسلام دا انسیڈنس آف دا امبیا علیہ مسلام از آلسو فار دا سیم پرپس آف ہدایت لقد کان فی قصص ہم عبرۃ اللہ الباب Allah Ta'ala says that in these incidents of the Anbiya Ali Musalam is ibrad, is a lesson. Lesson for people of intelligence. People who would understand, who would take that lesson because they realize this life is a very, very short place that we are in, short phase that we are in. We are all headed to the Akhirat. We have to make the everlasting life of the Akhirat. And in order to do that, We have to follow very closely in the guidance of the Qur'an and Sunnah. This is the ibrad that people of intelligence will take. That they will not get caught up in the hustle and bustle of dunya in such a way that they forget where is their destination. Like a person on a journey, he gets so caught up with some excitement at the airport that he forgets that he has to catch his flight. The difference here is that the time of flight for Akhirat, nobody will ever miss. In this airport of dunya, in the station of dunya, a person might miss his flight, he can catch another flight perhaps, it will cost him some extra money maybe, some inconvenience, but he might still get there. But the time comes to leave for Akhirat, there is no second chance to do anything further in dunya. Then a person leaves without his choice and will. So before that time comes, The intelligent person understands that he has to make his life of akhirat. And when the time comes, nobody knows. Nobody has any idea whether he will be still around tonight, whether he'll be around tomorrow, nobody knows. So in order to get there safely, the most important thing is our iman. That is the ticket to jannat. Without iman and without the aqidah being correct, then there's no entry to jannat. And then together with that, to gain direct entry to Jannat, the amal and action must also be in order. Then a person with the fuzzle of Allah Ta'ala, inshallah he'll gain direct entry to Jannat. Allah Ta'ala take us with complete and perfect iman. And Allah Ta'ala grant us all direct entry to Jannat without any difficulty with afiyat. Now among the things that are extremely necessary and important in terms of our aqidah, is that what Allah Ta'ala has made halal, then it must be deemed and regarded as halal. Something Allah has made halal to regard it as haram, that is totally wrong. Allah Ta'ala has made something halal, you can't make it haram. But likewise, extremely important, what Allah Ta'ala has made haram, then that too has to be very clear in the heart and mind. That there is no way that this can ever be legitimized, that this can be watered down in any way, that this can be regarded as, well, okay, times have changed. So if times have changed, so now, this is no more now to be regarded as important as it was once upon a time. Never. The deen of Allah Ta'ala is for all times. The Qur'an Sharif is still the last day. And the deen that Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi presented to the Ummah, that is still the last day. It won't change. So in order to maintain our iman, one of the very fundamental things is what Allah has made haram, that must be regarded as such. And likewise, all the concepts of deen, everything must be in its place. 
There must be no mixing of things, no changing of things, trying to water down something Allah has commanded. So in order to just get an idea of some of the concepts of deen, among the incidents of the Anbiya Ali Musalatu Wasalam, Allah Ta'ala has repeatedly mentioned in the Quran Sharif the incidents of Sayyidina Musa Ala Nabina Ali Salatu Wasalam and the aspects of the Bani Israel. Out of the 20 Jews, 20 paras of the Quran Sharif, 30 paras of the Quran Sharif, in 28 Jews, 28 paras, there's some mention of Musa Ali Salatu Wasalam or the Bani Israel. This is the similarity between this Ummat and the Bani Israel and the Sharia of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sayyidina Musa Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. So nevertheless, just to take one part that is mentioned in the Quran Sharif, some incident that is mentioned in the Quran Sharif and to relate this to our day-to-day life, this is what Allah has given us this incident for. For us to take a check for ourselves. And to understand what is the concepts of deen. Because the Quran Sharif is endorsing all this. So to make sure we have the right concepts. And if something has changed in our heart and mind, then to check where this came from. Did it come from, for example, maybe the westernized lifestyle that is being led all around us. So we too got affected by that. Did it come from some maybe feminist ideology? which is now being pushed onto us, or where it came from. So now to order to double check where we are, to just get some idea of what is our position in light of these ayat of the Quran Sharif, we will briefly discuss this one incident in the life of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, which Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Quran Sharif. He was in Egypt, very lengthy incident, but just the very brief introduction to the incident, and Musa alayhi salam actually grew up in the court of Fir'aun, in the palace of Fir'aun. We are aware of the incident, the details. Any case, as he grew up as a young man, suddenly one day there was some incident, and then the news reached him that Fir'aun has made a decision to execute him. Now somebody came and quietly informed him, this is the decision that has taken place. So you rather just quickly move away before the people of Fir'aun get hold of you. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, this was 10 years prior to Nubuad. 10 years prior to becoming a Nabi of Allah Ta'ala, being blessed with Nubuad. Now suddenly he gets this news that you are, there's a execution order against you. So in haste he flees from Egypt. And he makes his way towards Madian, which was the area of Sayyidina Shu'ib alayhi salatu wasalam. So now he just had to leave suddenly leave without any provisions, without any food, water. He left without even any shoes on his feet. Because he had to just suddenly leave in a moment. And now he undertook this very lengthy journey, not knowing the road himself, and also concerned that he must not be discovered. So now trying to avoid the main roads, he got lost in the way. Eventually after seven days and nights, he reaches Madian. Not having eaten anything, Nothing to the extent that his stomach had caved in towards his back. Now he comes towards Madian, and as he reaches, he reaches in the time of the day, he comes to a well, and there's a lot of people around, they are busy watering their animals, it's the last part of the day. So Allah Ta'ala mentions this in the Quran Sharif, وَلَمَّا وَرَدَ مَا أَمَدْيًا وَجَدَ عَلَيْهِ أُمَّةً مِّنَ النَّاسِ يَسْقُونَ When he came to this well of Madian, he sees these people all around. They are watering their flocks, giving their animals water to drink. And then he sees on the side, He sees two women standing aside and they are holding back their animals. Now this is 10 years prior to his nubuwad. But a Nabi of Allah Ta'ala, he is filled with compassion and he is filled with this kindness towards humanity, towards people in general, and more so towards those who are connected to Allah wa ta'ala, the mu'mineen. He cannot see something that somebody is in distress, somebody is in some difficulty, and he takes no notice about it. Even before nubuwat, they are blessed with the highest level of good akhlaq. 
when Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam returned from the cave of Hira after having received the first wahi, and he came straight to the house of Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu taala anha, and he mentioned to her that this is what happened, this is what transpired. This angel came, and this is how he pressed me so hard. And laqad khashitu ala nafsi, I feared for my life. Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha immediately consoled him and said, Kalla la yukhzik Allahu abada. Never, this will never happen. Allah will never allow any disgrace to ever come to you. And why? How come? This is still, the nubuwat only has been received. There is no ta'aleem yet that has taken place. And she is already making such a big claim. She then substantiates a claim. And the substantiation she gives, how can you ever be disgraced when you are at the peak of good akhlaq? إِنَّكَ لَتَسِلُ rahim, wa تَحْمِلُ الْكَلْ وَتَكْسِبُ الْمَعْدُومُ وَتُعِينُ عَلَى نَوَاعِبِ الْحَقِّ How can you ever be disgraced? You are the one who has the best of akhlaq. That people who have good akhlaq and disgrace, these two things can't mix. Good akhlaq will maintain the respect and honor of a person. And you saying that you feared for your life, meaning you fearing not being able to fulfill the responsibility, that's a disgrace. Allah will never allow that to happen to you. Nevertheless, Musa wasalam, sees this, he asks them, Ma khatbukuma, why are you standing aside? What's the problem? Why are you, are you not going and watering your animals? So they replied and said, La nasqi hatta yusdira ri'a. Wa abuna shaykhun kabir. There's two issues here. One is, we cannot go and water our animals till the rest of the shepherds have done their job and are gone. Why? Because if we go in, we are going to have to rub shoulders with them. We are going to have to jostle with them. And this intermingling, now this is 10 years before the nubuwat of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. They were the daughters of Sayyidina Shaib alayhi salatu wasalam. And they are saying, we cannot go be part of this. Because if we go, the crowd is there, we can't be intermingling with this crowd. Now this is a teaching of our deen, as mentioned right at the beginning, Allah Ta'ala gave us these incidents of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ This is ibrat, this is lessons for us. And these lessons have been highlighted by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. These lessons have been highlighted to us by the Qur'an Sharif and by the Sunnah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wasallam. One of the extremely important lessons is that the segregation of the genders will be maintained at all times. That non-mahrams will not intermingle. Whether it is somebody's wedding or somebody's walima, that walima cannot be called a sunnah walima if it is contravening the laws of Allah Ta'ala. If there's free intermingling carrying on and say, no, you're invited to the sunnah walima. That's not sunnah anymore. That is inviting Allah Ta'ala's wrath. That in an open manner, blatantly, the laws of Allah are being flouted, there's some music being played, there's this free intermingling happening, and people all dressed for the kill, and then the iman is getting killed in the process. So, this is something highlighted by the Qur'an Sharif, and highlighted in a way that cannot be overemphasized better than that. Where Allah wa ta'ala addresses the sahaba kiram the most noble people of the ummah and after the Anbiya alayhi salam, the greatest of personalities. And Allah Ta'ala commands them with regards to the most chaste woman who ever set foot on earth, the azwaj mutahharat, the noble wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Allah Ta'ala addresses the sahaba, وَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُنَّ مَتَاعًا فَاسْأَلُوهُنَّ مِنْ وَرَاءِ حِجَابٍ That out of sheer necessity, if you have to ask the azwaj mutahharat, the Ummahatul Mu'mineen, the mothers of the Ummat, but they are not your biological mothers. So you will maintain this curtain and veil in between. Some necessity you need to ask, you do it from behind the curtain, from behind the veil. Who can ever claim one fraction of purity that the Sahaba Ikram possessed? And which woman can claim one fraction of the purity that the Ummahatul Mu'mineen had? But Allah Ta'ala made them the example. So that we take the lesson. So in any case, this is the same lesson that these young women were now upholding. That hatta yusdira ri'a. When the shepherds go away, then we'll go. Then the second question automatically comes in. What are you doing here then? Why did you come with your animals to water them? So they immediately have already upfront given that answer. Wa abuna shaykhun kabir. 
Our father is extremely elderly. He is unable to do this task. And there's no other men folk in the home. Out of sheer necessity, we had to come and do it. In other words, the place of the woman is at home. But when necessity demanded it, there was no other choice. Due to a lack of choice, we had to come and do this. But we will do it in a way that does not contravene Allah's command. We will not go and mix up with the men. And we will wait for them. Now this, again, is a, such an important teaching of deen. And this is what maintains that home. That somebody is the guardian of the home, is the queen of the home, is taking care and giving the correct upbringing and tarbiyat of nurturing of the children at home. Somebody is earning a living and bringing that back home. And in this way, this entire home functions in a proper manner. But the Western lifestyle, everybody must be a man. They didn't say everybody must be a woman. Everybody must stay at home. No, everybody must be a man. Everybody must go. Nowadays we talk about it and say, but isn't that how it should be? Everybody must have a life. Everybody must have a career. Everybody must have the equal opportunities. Equal opportunities in the process, what happened? The whole family lives got destroyed. The children started doing their own things as well. And as a result, the whole system collapsed, the society collapsed. And that is the so many social problems that are becoming the order of the day, where it stems from. That there's nobody at home now to take care of what is supposed to be taken care of at home. In any case, so Musa Ali Salatu Salam, any case he goes forward, by the time these shepherds have now gone, their issue was they were very, very mean in the sense that after having watered their flock to prevent others from coming and benefiting from the water, they would place a huge boulder on the mouth of the well. On the top of the well, a huge boulder. It took 10 people to carry that boulder and put it in place. Now these women would come and they would only be able to just give their animals the water that is spilt all over the outside of the well. They could not draw any water from the well. Musa wasalam, goes forward single-handedly picks up that boulder which 10 people needed to lift. And he then draws water out of the well, he waters their animals, and then he, he goes away on the side. And he goes and takes shade under a tree, and he turns to Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala, Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer. Allah, I am totally in need of whatever good you descend to me, seven days and nights, without any food, without any water without any food, etc. In any case, the daughters of Shaykh Ali Salatu Salam, now they've had their work done for them very quickly, so they now return home immediately. When they come home, they've come long before the normal time. Because normally it would take them much later to come. Immediately, Shaykh Ali Salatu Salam asked them, that what happened? How come you came so early? Meaning something has happened. As a parent the concern about every movement of their child. Because that's a responsibility of a parent. Shuaib Islam's daughters came early also, he was concerned, what happened? So he asked the question. Sometimes somebody's child, even daughter comes past midnight, no questions asked. And then what's the outcome of it is the outcome. Allah Ta'ala save us and protect us. So immediately he asked them, that how come you came so early? What's the issue? So they gave the whole incident, this is what happened, this one person came along and he, sing, he, he assisted in watering the animals. As a result, we got our work done quickly, we came back. So he decided that this person was so kind, whoever he was, we should reward him in some way, we should now also be kind to him. So now again, who's going to go and call him? There was nobody available to call him. He had to, out of necessity, send one of his daughters to call him. So he sent one of his daughters. Now the Quran Sharif, there are many, many incidents of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, which are condensed very, very briefly. Because the Quran Sharif is not a storybook. It's a book of Ibrad, a book of Hidayat. And it mentions the most important aspects of an incident. Now this woman is coming, this young girl is coming to call Musa alayhi salam. So if there's something of importance in it is, well, she came to call him. But Allah Ta'ala doesn't just mention that. Allah Ta'ala mentions how she walked. Subhanallah. The Quran Sharif is highlighting how she walked. 
What is that telling to us? What does that say to us? That even our walk, our talk, everything is governed by the way that Allah Ta'ala wants us to live. And Allah Ta'ala highlights this. فَجَاءَتْهُ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحْيَا One of them came, تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحْيَا Walking with utmost modesty. Literally, عَلَى اسْتِحْيَا عَلَى When something, for example, a person has now mounted himself on an animal and he's riding it. So you'll say, now Allah, he's, he's riding this animal, he's mounted it. That is the similitude that is being given here. That as if Haya has been personified in some way, has been given some form, and she is now firmly seated on Haya. In other words, she herself has become a personification of Haya. She has become head to toe Haya, modesty and shame. And this is a modesty and shame that Deen has emphasized upon us so much that if this modesty is lost, then everything is lost. Then even Iman is in danger. If that modesty and shame is gone, then zina will be the order of the day. If that modesty and shame is gone, then there will be no respect left also between parents and children as well. Between young and old, there will be no respect because haya is the root of all this. There will be no etiquette, any good manner and akhlaq, it matters nothing. Haya is gone. إِذَا لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَاسْنَعْ مَا شِئِتْ Nabi Kareem says, a person who's lost his haya, it won't bother him what he does, he'll do anything. So any case she came in this manner, it is mentioned in the books of Tafsir when she came, she came, now this was in the shariat of Shaybul Salatu Salam, perhaps the niqab was not part of the shariat. But she came and she covered her face with her sleeve. And as soon as Sayyidina Musa Salatu Salam saw a woman approaching, he immediately lowered his gaze. Any case she came and she said to him that my father is calling you that in Lana. My father is calling so that he may reward you for what service you rendered. Now that's all. Very much straightforward to the point. No chit chat of any sort. How's the weather today? And any other as we say, well you've got to be courteous and got to be very nice. But in that courtesy and nice, sometimes what not is happening, the whole marriage is going unnice. That whole marriage is falling apart because he's getting too courteous with other people. And he's finding a lot of enjoyment now in finding out the weather, what's the weather with others. This is a lesson of the Quran Sharif. Totally to the point, to the extent of genuine necessity. And not being ambiguous about anything, clear, but not being, as we say now, you've got to be sweet. They're being so sweet that the whole marriage is getting bitter. So in any case, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam then goes along, but how does he go along? He says to her, number one, you walk behind me. He doesn't know the way. You walk behind me. Why must walk behind? Meaning at a distance behind, so that even by chance my gaze mustn't fall on. And number two, you will need to now direct me, if I have to lead, turn right somewhere, you throw a pebble towards my right. And if I have to turn left, you throw a pebble towards my left. Because that voice also I don't hear. Out of sheer necessity, what you said, you said. But now without necessity, if I can avoid it, I don't want to hear the voice also of turn right or turn left. Subhanallah, all these incidents are mentioned in the Quran Sharif, the time has run out already. But it is mentioned for our ibrat, for our hidayat. That we have to maintain these aspects of deen. This is what deen has given us. To maintain the purity of life. Maintain the purity of society. Then you'll get that healthy family coming up. Then you'll get those households where the concepts of deen are alive, the qualities of deen are alive, then you'll get those children growing up, who are also growing up in those same concepts, and with that same type of values in their life. Otherwise the values, there's no more values, it's only valuables. The whole quest is for valuables, how much wealth. But values inside, that will get lost. The concern for values will be a faraway thing, that was something for history, that was something for the old people, they had values, we got a lot of valuables. But then what's the outcome of it? Has this given anybody peace of mind and contentment of heart that he only has valuables but no values? It is values, values of haya, values of deen and akhlaq, values of contentment and qana'at, values of all the things that Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam given us 
that is what brings the true happiness in life. That is what makes life worthwhile. That is what makes life, that life which will inshallah become a means of a person gaining direct entry into Jannat. Allah wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq. Allah ta'ala grant us the ability to imbibe these lessons of the Quran Sharif and live them as well. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.